Alright, that has freed up some space. Pop back so to what are, where is uh, Martin right shit. now? Martin is hanging out in this temple where he will hang out for the next 50 episodes of this video game while we wander around and do random shit. I thought we decided to do the, the main quest because we were auguring this baby in. Like, Unfortunately, the main quest does involve a great deal of running around doing random shit, so... Uh, how's that shield versus our shield? It is slightly better. Then they've got the Akaviri Dai Katana, a.k.a. Oh, I love the Katana it. I love you can it. actually wield with two hands. I love it, I love it. I love that it's called a Dai Katana. I love it. It's... I'm a nerd. Um, and there's the full blades armor if we want to do that, but honestly, like, that takes up a lot of. I, I'm sure a daikatana is a reference to a specific sort of Japanese blade, but I'm reading it as a reference. No, to we've it. no, okay, it, we've litigated not. this a hundred times. Yeah, but we have. I don't remember it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that daikatana the video game. Firstly, it actually came out after daikatanas appeared in the Elder Scrolls series. So if anything, Daikatana is a reference to the Elder Scrolls yeah, franchise. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good point. Where did that come from? I, I If I had to guess, I'd say that probably John Romero just played Daggerfall or whatever. Because I always think of, like, Daikatanas as being, you know, a, a thing that people thought was a thing because of that video game where... It was named after the thing, even okay, though Daikatana so... is not like a proper Japanese term for any sword. Hold on, I'm, I'm looking know... up Children of Doom now so I can search, but like, I didn't realize Daikatana was in Daggerfall, and that obviously predates like, anything related to the actual game of Daikatana, so now I'm curious. It may actually be in a... It came out, no, Daikatana, the video, Daggerfall came out one year before the announcement of Daikatana, so... Now, I, I'm not 100% so, sure about this, so I'm, I'm looking this up now. Yeah, okay, Morwen had Daikatanas for sure. So the other provinces? Yeah, I'm fairly certain Daikatanas were in Daggerfall. Kind of I, 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 I it, tried it to play that seems right. recently. The Ultima have powerful wizards. It could be a dangerous situation. Hail. Anyway, yep. if anyone's Daikatana, interested in, in in what's going on right now, uh, Joffrey has sent us to um, the Imperial City to go meet up with Barris, the guy who gave us the Amulet of I Kings, moved. or at least let us leave with it when One the Emperor was food? murdered. See me. Um, okay. Who I guess is spying on the cult. Goodbye. Oh, there he Sit is. Sit down. Don't say anything. Just do what I say. Okay, so this is this is a quote from. A minute and walk out of it. It's unclear exactly when this is from we'll in the in Masters of Doom. Uh, it is in Chapter Five, immediately after the founding of id Software Can't in March of 1991. Good, February Remember. 1991. Wait for um, to follow. Carmack's D and D world was a personal movie. masterwork of forests and magic, time tunnels and monsters. He had a 50-page glossary of characters and items such as Quake, a fighter with a magical Hellgate cube floating above his his head. The Chalice of Insanity, a chalice from which you will get jelly beans of insanity, which, if ingested, will cause you to go nuts and fight everyone around you, and the mighty Daikatana Sword. So, yes. presumably, if this is from their D&D campaigns, it does predate uh, uh, Daggerfall. But there's no date associated with that quote specifically, okay. and I don't know if this is from a later D&D campaign at id after Daggerfall release. I'm on a red hot lead here. The Ninja was a novel written in 1980 by Eric von Lustbader. It was a tale of revenge, love, and murder that blended... It, the author blends a number of known themes together. Crime, suspense, Japanese martial arts mysticism, and Orientalism. Oh, sorry, that, that last one wasn't in the Wikipedia article. That was, that was just, um... True. <laughs> so you said... But yeah, I, uh, I apparently gonna... the Daikatana appeared in this novel, which seems like it was pretty popular among Martin fucking nerds. We were I, I was gonna actually ask, like, oh, race. does this all just go back to James Clavell's Shogun novel 
Like, does it get mentioned in there somewhere, and that's There's where it came from? The Arcane University. Tarmina's that's the okay. So that one is the earliest I could think of. But then let me check something real quick. Why don't you take that book too? I don't know if it's in there. It may not be, but like that was the that was the thing. That and the miniseries were like the things that made me at Luther. No, it was. I don't think it was in popular in the West. I don't think it was in Shogun. I'm, I'm, I've got another lead which I'm tracking down. University, supposed to know everything there is to know about Deidre. I like that the show has now become live research. I actually unironically kind of love it. <laughs> this might just be the break we need. Okay. Yes, I believe that that is that is the earliest known patient because it was also referenced in a Wolverine, one of Wolverine's first comics in his own line back in 1982. But that would have come out after the novel Ninja. So I think the Daigatana is from Ninja, and because nobody was doing original, like nobody had just like a million animes to use as reference back then. Everybody's just like cribbing all this like cool, oh man, cool Japanese swords so from this one novel. Do the... But but is that one novel responsible for the entire eighties ninja craze? Because like. You, you end up in the 80s with ninjas becoming, like, a, a pretty big pop culture icon. Ah, um, you must be the one I got the message about. As, as like, How separate from, you know, Bruce Lee kung fu movies, right? No, like absolutely not. Absolutely specific... not. Okay. You know of them? Like, the most martial arts crazes and stuff were huge in the 70s, to the point where there's... I, I like to... I, I like to bring this up sometimes. There was a dojo war in New York City that led to the actual death of a person who was, like, killed by a throwing spear. Right, but that's what I'm saying, is, like, the 70s, you have sort of uh, kung fu movies that sort of, like, ran alongside black exploitation films as sort of, like, non-white cinema du jour. And, and that is different, I think, than the 80s ninja fascination that gave rise to master ninja and teenage mutant ninja turtles and all the marvel characters like uh, the hand and electra and and all that shit that happened in the 80s i, I think that's very distinct and separate from the martial arts films of the of the 70s writings a bit myself at least yeah that i could find it is clear from the text that Mankar Cameron's commentaries come in full. Especially because it's so often framed as, as first two books. villainous or assassins, whereas martial arts stuff was always like these very like honorable to the tournaments. Of the, 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 like, the tone of that implementation is very different. Those who unlock this hidden path. And I'm, I'm wondering if it can all be traced back to that book, or at least heavily traced back to that book. Finding the shrine. Uh, apparently, need, like, test. Go ahead. If you want to find them, no, I okay. You know, I'm, I'm looking it up here. I actually am seeing that novel referenced a lot. Here, you can as like one of the first like is... breakout Western ninja media. If you please. I suppose worth as noting said, here as well that ninja itself is not the Japanese word for ninja. So, in the market district. is it not? <laughs> Shinobi. No. The proprietor. Oh, that's a video game. Collectors. He may have an idea of where to locate. Did you know there is Lady Ninjas? I learned that while I was in Kyoto. Kunoichi. The holy book of the mythic dog. The fun thing about ninjas Supposedly, is that, like, this, this is something I've been told. I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. Like, you apparently go to, like, a lot of ninja dojos. And evil power. In, it, where, like, they, they'll, tell you, they'll tell you about, like, the historical, Kyoto. Date, like... Yeah, like, people are like, yeah, historically, like, ninjas would learn here and do this. Apparently, like, a lot of them are just kind of making it up. Because <laughs> there, there's not a lot of real information. Look. But they, they want to well, tell the tourists something. There's, the there's guy not who even... showed me around Kyoto could have been making that shit up, I don't know. <laughs> but he was very convincing about it. I mean, hey, listen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it's he, not he would know better super than clear... <laughs> that they're like that historically there were any like organized ninjas uh certainly there probably were not like ninja guilds was their battle cry go ninja go ninja go go ninja go yes. ninja go no, that's exactly no that was the battle cry yeah, the most, of my 10th birthday the most historically authentic part of this <laughs> I, I unironically realized movies could be bad when I saw Ninja Turtles 3 in theaters for my birthday in, like, 1994 <laughs> or whatever. You actually want to know what, the, like, the time I realized movies could be bad was? You're going to say uh, something made, like, last year, and it's going to make me feel sad. 
<laughs> no, I, uh, no, it was a real story, actually. I, I when I was a kid, uh, I was really excited for the Dungeons and Dragons movie. And then if I don't have it, I I was already a weird fucking kid and would like read the reviews and the news and observer for various movies like that I had no interest in seeing or was not remotely old enough to see. Comes in four volumes. Because I I would really enjoy just reading the reviews. And sometimes things would get four stars. Sometimes things would get like one star, zero stars. And it but it was all very abstract to me because like again these aren't really movies I can watch. So it's just kind of like, I don't know, it's like getting into fantasy football without actually really having a good sense of what football is. But the D&D &D movie's coming out, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like really hyped to see it, like trying to figure out, oh, it's PG-13, can I see it? I don't know, but I don't know, you know, I could really, maybe if I really beg. And then I open up the newspaper, and I look up the review, and it's zero stars, and I've actually never seen a zero star review at that point. And I read the review, and it's like this circuit connects where it's like, oh, this thing you wanted to see could be a disappointment. Are you going to see the new one? I wish I had. I actually already did. I quite liked it. Yay! See? Redemption! <laughs> sure. Yeah, but none of you had to call the Pope to see if that movie's okay for Catholics to watch, okay? So, I win this round. <laughs> <laughs> Call the Pope to find out the D&D movies. I'm coming. not fucking kidding. Have you been following me? Leave Was me he out. like, well, Jeremy that Irons is good mine. in it, but otherwise. The real thing, I think I've talked about this before, but basically the, the Catholic God. Church had Are this you, hotline in I the mean, 90s that you would call about. and then I don't a bishop would have cult. watched the film and then he would give it certain ratings and he'd be God. like, you we, can't go see that movie about to toy soldiers about killing each other because cults? the violence is too much. Jesus wouldn't like that. And then your mom's like, you can't see that. During the festival of the Small soldiers? The church had beef with fucking small soldiers? That's the one I remember the most. So, so, so this what? poor the like bishop has to go see wise? every movie. You have to believe. Yes. This. <laughs> what, like, what are yes. his confessions? No. Like, I'm, I'm just cult. picturing him going into confessional and just being like, Men "Forgive me, Father, for I have seen you." Me. He's Anna. doing it in the name of the Lord. Revolutionary, even. What if he's like a huge cinephile and he's like, "You can't see small soldiers." The 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 like the the Gartham or whatever are obviously a queer allegory. So it's it yeah. This is a subtle condemnation of. I mean. I was still pretty young because it was the 90s, so I would have been like, your uh, not quite 13 yet, so you before 13 years old. Four, so I don't remember door. a lot of like the funny things the about it, but I'm sure they said shit like, he, I don't know. I actually, if there's any other millennials out there that had to call the Pope hotline to, to see if they could see a movie when they were a kid, please leave me a comment because I feel like I'm the only fucking person in the world who had to do this. My mom wouldn't let me even read the Harry Potter novels because of the witchcraft, which, as it turns out, was the correct decision in retrospect, but at the time had me really rolling my eyes. Um, I remember Pokemon being kind of like, kind of like the line, the blurry line for a lot of uh, like evangelicals. Where it's like, yeah. is Pokemon okay or not? Where people would have very, who are otherwise aligned on things, but have very, like, polarized reactions. I was allowed to watch Pokemon. You're not easy to get hold of. Me too. But it was like, I, I was obsessed with Pokemon, so I think that they could not take it from me, basically. Because they showed Pokemon on TV before I ever played any of the games. So basically, you would just come home from school, and you would sit down and watch cartoons for like two hours. So I would have seen it before my parents could call the Pope. You gotta, you gotta figure out what sins your kid is most motivated for, so that like you can allocate like that sinful block. The sewers right. Run it's, all, it's always been weird to me, because I'm like... There are access just in every barely place. too old for like both the Pokemon and Power Rangers. So there are people that are like well one or two years younger than me that are really into yeah. those things, attention. and it just never clicked for me. And I, I feel weirdly alienated Follow. by it. I know how to get to. Like I've played Pokemon so games. Pokemon's great. You know, you capture some animals, you level them up, whatever. But like, I never got into the kid craze of it, right? Like my nephews collect all the cards. They play all the game. They are they want Pokemon themed birthdays. They're into it. I was like. One or two years, just like slightly too old to get that level of, of kid-like obsession. 
I, well, I, I was at the perfect age for that. I remember all the, the fucking, like, the rumors and shit about the first game, like, Bill's Secret Garden, where you could get, supposedly, <laughs> if you got behind the, you know, Bill is the guy in Cerulean City, who, uh... So I'm, I'm I forget the one, what huh? he even does. And... And there was, oh, there's this little bit of, of terrain behind his house that you can't get to. And the rumor was that uh, if you went there, you were able to get through. You could capture Mew there, which turns out not to have been the case at all. And, like, all that kind of, like, like not pre-internet, but pre-internet culture, uh, like, local lore of the games. I love that shit. Yeah, my my local rumor. Oh, go ahead. Let's go. No, I want to hear your local rumor. Uh, our local rumor again. I was too old for like the the kid friendly games, so I was. Our local rumor was uh, that that um, you you could unlock bananas and pajamas in Mortal Kombat Three Ultimate, and, and you, you just tried said, so okay. hard. <laughs> when you said that you were too old for like the kid friendly games, I had no idea what was gonna come out next. It's like yeah, so so my <laughs> it was all about like uh, people said that Duke Nukem could fuck. Look out. <laughs> well, I mean, my my mom. I mean, I I have, I have four siblings. My mom had five kids, so we were pretty lax about standards. Just because, like, are you really going to try to gatekeep the ten year old from stuff that you don't want the five year old to see? It's it's too much to that 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 interaction graph is too complicated. The kids can just watch whatever as long as they're not they're not doing anything bad. This was mine. So I, I had like no constraints, nice. and it was amazing. It was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> It's actually occurring to me that, and this is very usual for whenever I'm in a room of arbitrary people, I think I'm the only person in here who didn't grow up with Pokemon. At all? But you were the perfect age, Rutsgarn. Yeah. I, was, I was the perfect age. Everyone I knew was into it. Uh, I didn't own a Game Boy. Uh, I didn't, wa I didn't, I don't know if like it was on a channel that I didn't get or like it was on a time I didn't watch TV, but like, yeah, the, the TV show was never in my life. Uh, the, and it, it's like, it was definitely, there was keenly this thing that was happening that I wasn't part of. Uh, but it's okay, because I was in a Dungeons and Dragons, which nobody was into, which is a problem, because you need people to play it with. <laughs> so basically, everyone's playing Pokemon, and I'm like, yeah, I'm right with you, I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons in the abstract. You can always play Dungeons and Dragons with your Pokemon plushie, uh... Mm, nope. As it happens, no. <laughs> I, I got like a booster never... of cards at a Burger King, and I once, well, my sister did too, and we tried to figure out the rules from first principles and play around of it once. And that was the extent of my Pokemon experiences until I was about 25. The cards came with little gems, and I like to put the little gems in my mouth, and then I got in trouble from them in my mouth. <laughs> I, I, I will never not be shocked at how, like, orthogonal both Rutzgarn and I came to role-playing and what it means and, like, how that has shaped fundamentally our different ideas about the entire concept. Yeah, yeah like, you get, you get weird ideas and, like, kind of a weird socialization and weird upbringing when a lot of, you're you're kind of, like, one of your big touch points for Dungeons & Dragons is obsolete, shitty 1989 rulebooks for a game that you have no human beings to play with. I, but that's that's wild to me because like my first exposures to like role playing games were literally like the old Fallout games and Baldur's Gate. Like that's how I yeah. learned that that something other than a first person shooter existed, and and uh, uh, and an RTS. I guess I was also playing StarCraft and stuff, but like. It, it's it's just it's just wild to me that like my entire exposure to what role playing is are these like scripted simulacrums of a tabletop game, and you grew up with actual tabletop games, and and the way that shapes the way you understand how these systems work or how they're supposed to work is is like it's completely different. It's night and day, and I think that's really fasc fascinating. Because I have some real dumb fucking is about role playing. I, <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, like you have, you have what your ideas are about is about computer role playing, and I think that, like, actually, when you talk about what role playing means to you, especially when it comes to not role playing games, 
That's something that I definitely empathize with a lot. Uh, is when you talk about role playing, like we talk about role playing in a game that's like not really a hardcore RPG, but does kind of provide a simulation basis where there's like there, there's kind of a firm mechanical footing that you can easily apply a parallel set of logic and values to like where you could you could play this game not quite as yourself playing this game but as the hypothetical persona that you're playing would so like you could make choices based on what makes sense within the fiction that is supported by like a, a stable rule set and that's something that i actually think is very relevant to certain Good. schools of rpg Remember, design which are maybe a little less in vogue these the days but which i do find, find interesting where it's like in a way that actually almost harkens to I mean, what's called like old school revival role playing where you have these systems which provide kind of like a mechanical focus that doesn't touch on anything you'd call role playing like acting as your character or like persuading people of things any of like the sort of soft social aspects of it because the idea is that you bring all of that and the rules just kind of provide you a framework to hang everything on right but then you get into the conversation about like how masturbatory is it to do that to oneself right like because a lot right, of yeah. the point of an actual role-playing experience is to role-play and then have that reciprocated right i'm acting like the drunken bard and you're acting like a warrior that's telling me to shut the fuck up because we need to sneak up on these guys like that that's that's role-playing whereas like simply choosing comedy drunk option in a list of options based on my stats and uh character description is, isn't the same oh. thing. Oh, you don't like sarcastic? You don't like the the choice <laughs> the choice wheel sarcastic? You don't know what's gonna fucking come out of their mouth, but it's gonna be sarcastic? Sarcastic core is my favorite vibe. <laughs> yeah, but no, I think I think what I'm oh, getting into here is, is it's less like it, it, in a way I think that the purest way to get at the role playing, like the sort of old school role playing experience, is less like to play Baldur's Gate and choose a dialogue option than it is to play like um, uh, Elite Dangerous or to do like heist, to do Grand Theft Auto, just to play solo online in Grand Theft Auto 5. To, it's just to kind of have this game which has mechanics. And kind of the the framework of a world and just to approach that mechanical framework from the kind of solo perspective of how am i moving through it not just as a person who's trying to like pl push these buttons but how do i kind of pretend that i'm a part of this world for whatever it is oh no boris Okay, we did it. We we did that thing that that we haven't described at all. What, we what are about we doing? What, we're doing. We, what, what are we, we doing? Are, Let's describe for our audience. We need we need to hunt down this this cult, and the cult uh, has these books. Uh, Why? The fourth of which should be in my inventory. Um, because they're the ones who killed the emperor and stole the amulet of kings. So we, and we need the Amulet of Kings so that Martin can light the, the dragon fires and stop the Oblivion Crisis from happening. So, so they wrote we found down all where the they books. were going to hide it in the books? It's, a, it's an initiation technique, apparently. Wait, for what us? Are we at, what are we at, time wise? Uh, we are at uh, one hour and seven minutes, so we are already like way over time. But I didn't want to interrupt the conversation that was happening. Um, yeah, uh, so... Next time, we'll be doing that. Go make small games Maybe. in the meantime. Report back in the yeah. comments yeah. of the small games. I want, yeah, that's your homework. Everybody in the next week needs to make a small game and then tell us about it in the comments. And by everybody needs to do that, I mean, I don't think that that's a at reasonable expectation. No, but seriously, if you want to learn how to make Bitsy, just like at me on Twitter and I can show you some of the resources that I use. And also, every month there's a Bitsy Jam. I did the last one, it was fermentation. There'll be another one this month, so join it with me. I made a video game. It's... you. Uh, it, it, it generates a bunch of random rooms, and then it puts monsters in those rooms, and then it automatically moves you from room to room, killing the monsters and getting loot. Uh, 
Yep, it happens I... entirely within the console. There is no user interface whatsoever. In fact, there's no player <laughs> input whatsoever. Woohoo! I love it. We need more games without player input. We need more, like, mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Is Mountain too obscure to go out on? Is that do we need a bigger reference? No, that's a great no. one. That was a I big mean, deal is... for like an entire yeah. month five years ago. <laughs> wow, that's such a burn. <laughs> that was way more than five years ago. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> the mountain was released August eighteenth, twenty fourteen. That was nine years ago. <laughs> It's almost a retro game. I could do a fucking podcast about it. You could, actually. Because, you know what? A lot of people would be like, this is interesting. I've never heard of this. Where's our next-gen <laughs> Mountain remake? Uh, the top comment on the review for Mountain 2 is a, pa a quote from Patrick Klepek from Giant Bomb saying, Welcome to an existential nightmare. Oh, my God. <laughs> that sounds about right.